Welcome back to Light It Red. It is March 20th, which means allergy season, uh, which means this episode is brought to you by Claritin. I need um, that right our now. Our first sponsor. So thanks to them. Yeah. Um, but Not actually. <laughs> maybe. Maybe in the future, someday. One day. But with that, it is also bracket season. So the best and the worst time of the year. <laughs> best. Mm -hmm. I mean, just I think March Madness, in my opinion, is the best sports event. Uh, I do love football and everything that football brings, but the Super Bowl is cool. It's just it's one game. March Madness is an experience, uh, and I can't wait for it. Have you ever had what? What's your best bracket that you've ever had, or do you even know? Um, I probably can't remember. It's probably when I was a freaking kid not even knowing anything like i follow so much now and go through everything now and i guarantee you it is probably worse than when i picked just based on the mascots or logos when i was a kid like i think that just goes to show you how random it can be um i don't even know what the best one time i think i picked like baylor to win it all and they lost in the first round they were a <laughs> one seed it was like 2012 well, dude there's people there's professionals who follow it and the stuff they say, like, it makes sense, but, like, Jay Billis, if, I don't know if you know him, which I met him, by the way, it was really cool, at uh, the UNC, or not UNC, but the Duke NC game. State Duke game, which yeah. we'll get into uh -huh. NC State later, Yeah. Um, but last year, he had Arizona winning the whole thing, and they lost <laughs> in the first round, so, you know, that goes to show how there's not really a formula, and if you're making a bracket out there... You could get advice from other people, but I would say just stick to your guns because you could totally be better than, you know, the person that follows it a ton. Just make as many as possible and yes. have fun with it. <laughs> there you go. And try to, you're probably not going to make any money, but if you, I think in the past, I think I've made like five bucks just because if you end, if you have like a big group of like 30 people and you each pitch in like a dollar or something. Then you yeah. can win money. Yeah. But if you're entering like the big ones, like the thirty thousand dollar payout ones by these big like sports betting whatever, basically impossible. Yeah, yeah. you're not that's gonna not, win. That's so impossible. hopefully, only I will friends. say though, one one thing I've found interesting is with sports betting now live um, on FanDuel, there's certain stuff where you can bet for a team if they're gonna make it to like the Sweet Sixteen or the Elite Eight. And that's pretty cool where if I'm like, hey, my whole bracket's done, but I still think this team's going to go far, I could still bet on them to do that and make money off of it. So I've done that a few times before the you know tournament starts, which this episode will probably be out maybe by round two or something when that comes out. But we're recording it before, uh, so we are going to make a bracket because it hadn't happened yet, and we're still able to do so. But we are also in the midst of the aftermath of the – absolutely insane ACC tournament for men that happened, which women first uh, happened, and they did do good. I mean, they got to the final game. It was against Notre Dame, who I believe is a one or two seed. I think they're potentially a two seed um, in the women's bracket, uh, but we were not able to beat them in the ACC tournament, so we fell to a three seed for the women's. But then the men's happened, and I think we had previewed it a little bit uh, before it started. And I think the common just takeaway was, you know, hey, maybe we win like two games. Obviously, we have to win the entire thing to get in. Basically, a 1% chance. Keats is coaching for his job, and I didn't really expect anything of it. Me as well. Yeah, and then... You know, Louisville, it was like, okay, well, that's easy. Louisville was horrendous. They just fired their coach. They're going to get another one, trying to have any sort of semblance of a team. Easy win. Syracuse, they were, you know, better in the rankings, but like Coach had said when I went to the Duke game, one big thing that he talked about was that there's so much parity in the ACC. So 10 and 7, not really a big difference. We end up beating them. Next round was Duke, which they did just one of the last regular season games, our literal home ending game, last game at home. They beat us. We were close with them a lot in the game, but they pulled away in the end. And they were, I believe, the three or two seed. Um, and Duke was? Yeah. Duke was the, the two, and two. Virginia was the three. Yeah, Duke was the two. And I wasn't this. I mean, I... I with that game, I was like, okay, I could see a win because I personally think Duke is a little bit overrated. And, 
you know, but but however, they were separated from other ACC teams. It wasn't like they were right there with everyone. Um, and while I didn't expect a win, we pulled it out. I mean, the I think Diara and O'Connell had a pretty good good game off the bench. Same with uh, Taylor. I believe he was starting, and O'Connell may have been starting as well. But I was like, hey, that's a good shocking performance from your bench, guys. Awesome win for the team. I hate Duke. And then I look ahead and I'm like, wait, Virginia. Virginia sucks. Like I, I mean, they're I hate the way they play. They're terrible. So I'm like, we could make the title game. But it was against Carolina, which, well, well, it wasn't yet, was it? No, Carolina it was against Carolina or Pitt. Right. Which I had thought Carolina was going to win, but Pitt was a very good team. And even then, I would have been scared of Pitt as well because they just beat our butts, I believe, twice. So both of those teams were good, and I thought they were both better than Virginia. Um, and I honestly underestimated Virginia. Like, you know, I, I thought we were relatively going to be like, hey, we can win this game. But as the game was going on, I'm like, here we go. This is Tony Bennett crap. Like, they slow the game down. It's really hard. And... You know, I'm like, oh, that's upsetting. So I'm just laying on my couch. Game's almost over. And they're missing, like, what, five free throws in a row? Mm -hmm. Virginia? Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, that's not <laughs> that's not great. After a uh, insane technical where Ben Middlebrooks uh, misses a literal wide-open layup or dunk, I believe it was a dunk attempt, is hanging on the rim, tries to put the ball back in, gets called for a technical, and they have to shoot two free throws up a possession already. I believe it was three points. And the they miss both of them. Luckily, we get the ball back because we had the possession arrow. And one of the most insane shots in ACC history happens, which is just crazy to think, like, that it happened to us. Like, it's we. I feel like we, the NC State, at least just us here, it's kind of like, there hasn't really been a ton of optimism with basketball in general, and for it to like actually happen to us was pretty pretty mind boggling. Um, but Michael O'Connell, it's an absolutely insane shot. Was it lucky? Yeah, for sure. It was literally off the glass and it rolled around maybe ten times. But he hits it. DJ Burns takes an over takes over in overtime, and then we play Carolina, and I am not gonna lie when I said I. Did not, if I had to bet my life before, I would not have bet on us to win. I was scared. Yeah. I mean, we had, we were uh, on spring break during all this, but I know you and I had, had talked a little bit after the Duke game. Um, I didn't start, I, I was in Florida, so I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on. <laughs> I had no faith in the team. I was like, well, you know, this was done. I yeah. went to the, the women's ACC tournament and they had just lost in the championship. And I was like, well, you know. Guess we'll just wait until the NCAA tournament, and so they beat Duke, and I'm I'm like sitting in Wingstop, and I'm like, whoa, they beat Duke, and I was like, what in the world? And then I tuned in in my hotel, um, against the Virginia, against yeah, against Virginia, and I called you up as soon as that shot went down because <laughs> you had texted me and you were like, we're cooked. You were yeah, like, I was we're like, done. we're done. And I was I was right there with you. You get the the technical. It was a was it a tech? Like, yeah, it was a tech. I remember Burns grabbed And they the fouled. Guy. There was two of them. Yeah, Burns had a bad foul as well. Yeah. Um. So, so they missed like five free yeah, throws. Yeah, no, they really they shot themselves in the foot. Virginia, I mean, they still made the tournament, so it's like. Which I also hate. We'll get to that too, which they deserved. And they're not, they deserve to not be in it. And now they're not. So screw them. But. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, That shot went down. Called you up. And that we that we I called you before the game even went to overtime. Like the shot went in, it was like fifty eight fifty eight. So there was still some game left to be played. But yeah, they pull it out, and then I think you told me that like you're like you didn't think that we would beat Carolina. No, I was really scared. No, I mean I thought we'd keep it close, but like I bet the only thing I bet was our spread because we were maybe I don't know how many points we were underdogs but it was a solid amount and I was like well might as well take it I think it was six seven eight somewhere around there um and the game was not really in doubt a ton to be honest like I when they started going I was like okay well 
I guess we literally just won the ACC. <laughs> like I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Like Burns absolutely owned, you know, uh, Baycott. the entire tournament. Baycott, which obviously the, I think just looking at the tournament as a whole, I don't even have any stats because I don't think we really need to dive into any of that stuff because it's just, it's the only thing that stat wise I can remember is just it's this is literally the first time this has ever happened in the ACC where a team has gone five games in five days Mm -hmm. a team we're the lowest seed ever to win it the last one was seven which we were tied with a lot of other teams to do that and we were a 10 seed here the only other team to even you know relatively do what we did was UConn back in I believe it was 2011 with that insane team with Kemba Walker Mm -hmm. and (laughs) to be able to just even relatively experience that was like insane you know I I just I I couldn't believe it the entire day after it happened. I was just so shocked. Like, the maybe it was lightning in a bottle. Maybe stuff finally pulled through together. Like, maybe they finally got it together. Maybe it was very good matchups. But I, th- I think it made it so much better going through Louisville, Syracuse, uh, Virginia, but specifically Duke and Carolina. Right. To go through, I think that made it way more meaningful. To yeah. go through those two teams en route to here. Because if we played Pitt, it would have been like Carolina fans would have been like, yeah, but you didn't beat us. You know? But no, we did. It was or like the perfect, the perfect story. It was perfect. Perfect. And, you know, I think uh, as it was as much of the players that we thought were going to be stars going into the year, like DJ Horn and... Uh, Br- um. MJ Rice. No, I mean I thought it was gonna be uh, MJ Rice, but um, just the the horn duo b- between those two, and, and then the DJ duo. Yeah, Burns or no, the DJ duo. Yeah. yeah, I got it mixed up. Um, but the DJ duo and the pieces off the bench that ended up coming in and and starting throughout the tournament, like Michael O'Connell was awesome. I loved him the entire tournament. He was phenomenal. Diara while fasting and doing Ramadan was insane. We had three guys, which middle, uh, I believe it was um, Aiden O'Con- or, uh, Michael O'Connell was one of them. They were on all ACC tournament first team, and then Diara was on the second team. So we had four guys on the all ACC teams. And, and even then... Burns was the MVP. Yeah, Burns was the MVP. Marcel had some phenomenal defense in the last game we played and oh had gosh. like 25 points. Did you a see few him? Times. He like clamped up. The yes, guy he's on the clamping outside up. We had and then blocked him. Horn was like just laughing and smiling while he was playing defense at the end of the Carolina game. Middlebrooks had a very uh, had a lot of good minutes in terms of his defensive play. Like we had, I mean Taylor obviously had I believe a, a twenty plus point game somewhere in there. Like so many contributions, they were so consistent, and it's just insane because this is not the team that we've or I have watched and I think Keats deserves a ton of credit for someone who you know I think if if they beat Duke and still lost maybe the next round I think he probably would have stayed I don't think I I personally wouldn't have fired him I would have fired him if he only won one uh maybe if Syracuse, it would have been like, okay, if you beat Duke, you're for sure. If you don't, we're going to have to maybe look into some stuff. But to go that far, you know, he got it an extension. Literally, I got the notification like less than an hour, maybe an hour after the game. Like the NC State was like, yep, we're giving you a two-year extension. Like, well, I think that was already worked into his contract if he had won the ACC tournament. Oh, was it? Was, it? So it was an automatic extension Oh, to I thought his they had like – just been like, okay, this is what we want to do. No, I don't think that's what it, I think oh, he okay. got several bonuses for winning that. I do know that he got like maybe four or five million. And I think he extra. got he's extended through like twenty thirty. Well, that makes more sense. Yeah, um, that's, I don't think that I don't think the school would just be like okay, <laughs> would throw money instantly. at him. I forget who tweeted it, but they tweeted it and like NC State is giving. They're like he said is giving. Oh, I'm like yeah, really? That's, that's weird. Probably the wrong so that, wording. That makes more sense. Yeah. But still, for him, I think he deserves a ton of credit for a guy who. You know, was obviously getting a lot of hate, especially all the time, which some of it was deserved and some of it I don't think was, especially with just the fans. I think some of them sometimes obviously booing every single time when they announce or doing this, I think is a little bit disrespectful. 
Um, but I do think you can speak about, you know, hey, is he the right guy in the right way? Which I do think we did in the last episode. But now that's all put to bed. Props to him. And we'll, we'll see if it's sustainable. That being, is he the sustainable and right coach? And was this just him maybe thriving under pressure? Is he going to get to another under pressure situation where his job is on the line? Or is maybe this the start of something where we can get maybe some more recruits? But it, this team was built off transfers. This whole team was. So maybe that's the identity of state, which is harder to do, is get a lot of transfers every year. But if there were any era to do that in, it would be it would be this one. Yeah, I I think that even if it was a fluke, it was still something that I think we'll all remember for a really long time and get to enjoy, even if they don't go on a run in the tournament or if if we go through another five year slump. Yeah, or something if we like lose that. the first round or whatever, like we'll always have the ACC championship banner from twenty twenty four. And and I think it means so much more because it hadn't happened in so long like 87 yeah. right and just for us to be at the school and I wasn't even really doing a ton during spring break I, I did a little bit of stuff but I didn't really travel a ton like you did and when they won I'm like dude I want to be involved in this like I wish I could have gone to DC I had people that I know that went to DC for the very last game against Carolina mm-hmm. it was awesome and so I was wanting to see them when they came back and I was about to go to bed and I got a notification that they were coming back literally that night so I woke up and just literally called my friend who was still awake, was about to go to bed, drove down, and they I stayed up and they got back at like three forty three a three forty five a.m. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't get back to my house at like five a.m. because they got off the bus. They had the trophy. You just you could hang out with them. They gave like a little speech and stuff. You could talk to them. Like it was a really cool experience just to be like wow like. You're right up there. Obviously, it's, you know, like, hey, they're students just like you. It's not like a professional thing, but it's still really cool to be like, hey, these are, you know, coveted athletes that just did an insane thing for our school, and I could just go up and talk to them like a famous person. Um, And then I also went to the sports and social place that they held, um, NC State, you know, Keats and everyone else, and the players went there to watch Selection Sunday. It was absolutely packed like it was absurd Mm -hmm. i got there a little bit early and i got a seat at the bar and just literally chilled there the entire time and then some people i knew came as well um and they were also there where you got to talk to him or whatever but yeah um yeah it was that whole weekend was awesome and uh like you said even if they don't do a ton it'll still be one of the best just sports moments for state you know obviously we're not in terms of basketball sense, we're not Carolina. Hard to say, you know, with the titles, obviously, that's that's a given. But uh, I think just for us to have that is insanely special. Yeah, I think it could potentially revamp the program a little bit, too. I hope so. Recruits seeing that and saying, well, maybe maybe I won't go to Carolina or I won't go to Duke. I'll go to NC State instead. Because, you know, it was... I think Keats did a good job building the culture there. Like, they seemed to love him and just be super happy and stoked. And I think something happened, and he deserves the credit because someone had to potentially motivate these guys to, you know, play the way they did. So, again, like you said, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, insane, (laughs) insane stuff from a team that we did not expect to win that. I mean... Even beforehand, I would have been like, yeah, the women's, they have a way better chance of winning oh, ACC yeah. than the men well, they do. Got, they got a double bye. I know, and they lost. I know. They won, I think they won against, I went. One or two, one maybe? They had three three total games. So yeah, they won so two, two games and then lost the championship. And I I went to, well, I went to, I was in Charlotte for Olivia Rodrigo for a concert <laughs> on Friday. Wow, okay. So I didn't go to. The, so, so it was I my girlfriend. From, she went, went to the same, wait. Yeah. On Charlotte? Yeah. Yeah, she went to the same concert. Yeah, and we talked about this. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, so I went from Charlotte to Greensboro, and then went. I went back home and then came back to Greensboro. And then, yeah, I went on spring break. So I was really, like, unplugged from it. Um, but, yeah, the women's team looked pretty good, too. So yeah, hopefully they give can them do. their flowers as well. They actually have 
two or they're, they're not they're scheduled for two home games at Reynolds. Yeah. Um, they will host unless they lose, which in they the first round probably won't. But hopefully not. They're a three seed. Um, who do you watch the Carolina game? I'm just curious. Again, NC State Carolina ACC championship. I just uh, I w- I had a plan with some friends, and so I did that, and then I just tried not to watch the game. Um, and I I watched part of it on my phone for a good amount, part of it on TV, and then I went through a slight recap of just watching the entire thing. Um, so it was bits and pieces but yeah I didn't go out anywhere to mm-hmm. to watch I kind of prefer like for March Madness I'm literally going to be in the library <laughs> 24-7 just trying to secure one of the monitors the screens in the library and just hook my laptop up there with YouTube TV they'll have like a quad box you can do and that's just where I'll be for 12 hours from Thursday to <laughs> Sunday. Nice. Uh, so I, I'm not really like a go out and watch a game because I kind of like fully paying attention and, and being like, oh, like what's going on here? Like, you know, what is happening? It gives you more insight. Uh, unless if it's a game that I don't relatively care, then yeah, totally. But yeah. Yeah. I didn't go out anywhere and, and watch it. Like no, that. I didn't either. I, we, I was in. So the part of Florida that I was in, it was actually central time. So I missed the first half hour. Oh, you game. didn't think it was. <laughs> I get a text from my dad, and he's like, you watching this? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch it. He's like, well, it's on right now, and NC State's up by 10. <laughs> and I was in freaking Sephora, <laughs> of all places. We, I was with my girlfriend, and she was shopping, and then I was like, we got to go. So we watched it in the hotel, yeah. and we we had some wine and celebrated the win. Awesome. And that was cool. And then we drove back, so I wasn't able to make it to the sports and social event on what was it sunday yeah the day after so i wasn't hallie was there i saw hallie there yeah she said she ran into you she said you were more talkative than you've ever been in your life that's what, <laughs> what? she said <laughs> she said you were like it was like a completely different you know style. what I, I could totally see that i was just sitting there with a beer like drinking a coors light like what's up hallie like <laughs> yeah and then in the meetings for agramic uh I like come in with my <laughs> with my hood yeah. on and just sit in the chair. Yes. Yeah, I you, guess I could understand that. Yeah, she That's was surprised. Funny. She said she got to talk to DJ Burns for like an hour and a half. Really? She was like hanging out with them and stuff. That's cool. I don't I don't know if I believe her. She's maybe she's, what? Thirty minutes instead of an hour? Maybe like fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean I got to talk to O'Con- uh, O'Connell for like maybe five. What, was by at the, the bell longest. Tower? Uh, I no, not the bell tower. They came. Social? They came back at uh their basketball center or whatever. Mm. That's right next to the soccer. That's where they came back. So I just talked with him. What did he say? A little he bit. Said, get the, you get uh, away from me. Is that what he said? No, no. He was like they were all cool. Like they were chill. They were like yeah, letting people take pictures. They were out for a, a while. They came back and their cars were right there, so they could have just taken their cars and left, but a ton of them stayed, and they celebrated, and they took photos with everyone, uh-huh. and they just talked with people. And oh, I think O'Connell and Burns uh, were one of the last people there. So Yeah, uh, just soaking it just, up. Just, yeah, taking pictures with people and everything. I got to touch the trophy, too. That was sick. Nice. Uh, Horn was, like, holding it when they got off. And I think they put it in the they're, – they're obviously going to, you know, have it displayed somewhere. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's it was awesome. So I saw the the Instagram post that I saw you got selfies with some of them. Yeah. I was laughing at the DJ Horn one. Yeah, I cuz it was the blurriest. It was t- photo. he literally literally uh there were so many people trying to get it and um I don't know what it was. You know the phone where it does that thing where iPhone at least you take a photo and oh, it like night, lags a little bit. Or, yeah, yeah, I didn't I, turn that freaking thing on uh, so i did that and he was trying to leave and i didn't want to like you know be like no get back here take a photo <laughs> with me because that's like you know douche thing to do uh-huh. and i just wanted to get it quickly and it was kind of like a funny like slightly you know oh, yeah. blurred stuff but you could still take out what you know yeah you can make out what's there and then right. the o'connell photo i was like you look semi like talk i was you semi like talking him. i was semi i probably i think i am yeah. actually i think he's maybe six foot yeah I'm not better in any way, but he, uh, I, I was taller than him. And Burns is freaking gigantic. Like, it's oh, absolutely no. insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Like, 
you can't really hold the phone to take a photo. Like, he has to hold the phone so that you can take a photo. Like, I still did because my arms are longer than other people, but these all these, like, small girls that went there, like, they just <laughs> they couldn't get a photo. They had to have someone else take it, or yeah. he just held the, the phone out and would just take the photo for them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're awesome people. They're really cool. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'm happy for him. That's that's good. Shifting. Well, uh, this is semi related to uh to the to the ACC championship. Before we do our bracket to finish the episode. Um I just wanted to say, I know we've been talking about this a little bit on and off again for the past couple months. And I was looking in the rafters for the banner. Obviously the banner's not there yet. But I did go to PNC on Monday night. Um do you know what was that PNC on Monday night? What? It was WWE Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Professional wrestling. Yeah. We've been talking about that. Oh, yeah. Well, you went to midget wrestling. Y- yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> you're, yeah. A, you're a little wrestle guy. Well, we talk about wrestling at NC State, and every time we talk about wrestling, I, I make sure to make it a point to like somehow make some sort of like insert WWE comment. I just thought. And then you went to there. Full circle moment, kind of. Well, we covered it for Agromech. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, that's right, because you guys weren't at the meeting, so you covered that. Yeah. I went to PNC on literally yesterday. For Fall Out Boy? Yeah. How did you know that? Because I knew they were there. Oh. Okay. It, was, it was kind of a big deal. I didn't post anything. No, but like they actually, as soon as WWE ended on Monday night, they started bringing the speakers down for Fall Out Boy. Really? Oh, well, they were getting well, yeah, ready, the, yeah, it was really cool. I like Fall Out. There's probably, it's only the second, it's, probably, it's only the third concert I've been to. Been to Panic of the Disco, Maroon Five, and then Fall Out Boy. If that gives you any sense of my music taste, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they were awesome. There were we got there earlier. I went with my girlfriend, and I I did still have work to do, so I was like, she was like, "Hey, doors open," and then it starts at like six thirty, but there might be one band on before. I'm like, okay, that's fine. It shouldn't be too long. We'll come back after. Turns out there were three, and then. Fall Out Boy didn't come out until like nine forty five. Wow! And I was like, okay, well that's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna work. Yeah. So I had to do, I had to sign into WebAssign or whatever and do my assignment on my phone. On my phone. <laughs> the and concert. it was very hard. Yikes. It was just this random guy screaming about whatever. I don't know. The last opener was cool, um, but the other two were like whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that was that was hard. But yeah, Fall Out Boy was awesome. Um, so like, anyways, uh, getting away from yeah. All that random PNC stuff, we are going to fill out a bracket. Uh, it's not going to be, I'm going to go through any insane, you know, depth into all the matchups. We are just going to go through each one. We'll make a full one, and it'll be, it has to be made with both of our approval. So this isn't just one person picking and the other person, like, watching. If we agree, we'll move them on. If not, we'll find some sort of compromise. So mm-hmm. this is to where it's the light at red bracket for both Correct. of us. Uh, so let's start uh, in the East region with UConn and Stetson first. Do you want to have any one seeds losing to a 16 seed? Uh, no. I don't no. think so either. So ideally we'd put them all through. Yes, even Purdue. And unfortunately Longwood cannot go through because if you don't know, uh, there's been a, a certain trend with teams that end up upsetting other teams and moving on. Like if you remember Oral Roberts. Mm-hmm. Did pretty oh, good. You I know? see where you're going with this. And then Longwood yes. would be a, a pretty darn good upset to uh, go through. And then FDU is pretty pretty dang interesting as well. Mm. But uh, I agree. There's not going to be any There's gonna be any ones over 16 seeds. Uh, sticking with the East region, Northwestern FAU. Do you have any thoughts at all? Um, well, I just remember FAU from last year. Yep. And I know that they went on a run, yep. so I would go FAU on this one. I agree. I'll I tell anything. you, though, it's not anywhere close to the same team, even if it's the same players, because they performed not as well at all. But uh, Northwestern, one of their best guards, Ty Barry, um, or Perry, is injured. So that is why. Uh, watch out, though, for Boo Booey. Yes, that's his name, Boo Booey. Northwestern guard, he's insane. So if they win, it'll be because he dropped like 35. Hmm. But odds of that are not as high as FAU winning, so I agree. San Diego State, UAB. What even is UAB? UAB, um, is it Alabama something, something, Birmingham? I don't know. Not not going to lie. Don't don't really don't really know. 
Did they um, win their tournament? They did. They okay. did win their tournament. I mean, I know who they are. I don't know what they like the acronym stands for. Yeah. Like, well, didn't San Diego State make it to the Final Four last year? Yes, they did. So they probably... They got a little bit lucky, though. Okay. Uh, some of the road was a little bit easier, and I, they won a ton of close games, but UAB is probably the worst 12 seed. So, so San Diego take State. that with what you will, but I would probably move San Diego State. Auburn and Yale. I've seen a, peop- a few people actually pick Yale. My mm-hmm. girlfriend did, ironically. So I was like, did you watch anything with <laughs> people? And he was like, no. Uh, but Auburn, analytically... Uh, according to different analytical metrics, is the fourth or fifth best team in the country, and they're a fourth seed. So, so they're probably poised to go on I, a deeper I, run. I think so, but maybe Yale has a better style of play. Um, but I would probably suggest moving Auburn um, forward. Yeah, I think I have a good. Fe- I was in Auburn the other day, so I have a good feeling. I. I didn't visit the campus or anything, but I drove past it. Yeah, so. you drove. <laughs> so that so that means they're gonna win. Maybe perfect. First no, that time is over there. Hundred yeah, percent. I mean, Yale Yale's gone on runs in the past. Yeah, but that doesn't mean. I will say they did just barely beat uh, a team. Uh, it's Brown University, mm-hmm. who had literally had a losing record, and the winner of that would have made the tournament. So if Brown would have made it, they would have been probably fifteen or a sixteen seed, right? And they barely won. So. Auburn, what did they? They made it past the first round last year and lost to like Alabama or I think, something like that. I can't that. remember. Alabama was really good last year because they had Brandon Miller, right? Yes. Yeah. But I picked Auburn, them to win it all and they lost in the Sweet 16 or second round or something yeah. like that. And my second pick was UConn, but it wasn't the first. I mm. Normally, if I, in all, all the leagues that I run, I do two brackets because we kind of do like, hey, one for serious and one of like, hey, kind of for fun. Or if you have any other stuff you think of, you could do it because I think there's so many. Just different, uh, you know, matchups that could happen and change a lot of stuff. So normally I do two, um, but anyways, back to this bracket: BYU and Duquence. Duquence, I believe, is the worst 11 seed probably, but six and 11 is still a popular matchup. Only thing is, uh, Duquence is artificially raised to an 11, and BYU is artificially lowered to a six because of religious reasons. <laughs> really? I'm serious. Yes. What? Because when making the bracket and having, you know, teams play in certain locations and on certain seeds uh and in certain regions, you b- with the first weekend and the second weekend, you have to play, you know, if you play Thursday, then you play Saturday. If you play Friday, then you play Sunday. Well, based on how it worked out, BYU if they were a 5 seed, which is what they were generally predicted as, they would have had to play Friday, Sunday, and BYU does not hold any sort of activities on Sunday because of religious reasons. So they had to be a six. So technically, they're better than what they are. So um, if there were any eleven six, I would probably say BYU would uh, would be the winner. Yeah, we we played them this year too, and they we did they, they were beat good. us. Well, that's the thing. Looking back to NC State, we had brought it up anyways. I remember bringing it up. The losses we had, like Ole Miss, they didn't make the tournament, but other teams we played that we didn't think were as good actually ended up being like pretty good, mm-hmm. and we lost to them. Like BYU, it was like, oh, that sucks. Well, no, they were literally as, as sixty. Did you see that? What, there was a viral video this year of the BYU player getting fouled like on the baseline and falling over. Yeah, it was, like this <laughs> this white kid with like shaved blonde hair. Yes. And what did he say? He's like, "Freak you." Or yeah, something. he there. Like, uh, <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows uh, BYU's. Um, but he was like beat red too. <laughs> it was funny. You can check that clip out if you get a chance. It that is funny. very funny. Um, but here they end up. Uh, they end up moving on. He looked uh, like the kid who's like that hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. <laughs> you seen that video? No. He what? goes, "Mother trucker, dude, that hurt like a butt cheek on a stick." <laughs> That's exactly. That was the vibe I was getting never, from BYU player. I've never heard that one before. Look that um, up too. Well, that's probably what Moorhead State is going to be saying when they get destroyed by Illinois. I don't think they're going to upset at all. Uh, so no upset so far in the East. So far, no. But would you like one in this next round? Washington Drake. State is the seven seed versus Drake as a ten seed, who pushed out Indiana State, who would have been a tournament darling, but there were unfortunately so many tournament bid stealers, you and NC State being one of them, that it pushed Indiana State out. Uh, so. What are we thinking with Drake and Washington State? Drake won there. I oh. agree. I like Drake. What what uh, conference are they in? Missouri Valley. 
And they they won that. Yeah, one. against uh, Indiana State, which was both of them were tournament teams. They were very good. Indiana State, their net ranking was 29th, and it's the highest net ranking for a team that's ever been left out of the tournament. They didn't win their tournament. So uh, Washington State, some people have them going to the Elite Eight that I've seen. Um, I'm not as high. I think they beat Arizona, but I'm not sure if Arizona is the most trustworthy team in the country. And the Pac-12 is not as good this year. Uh, so I agree. Let's take Drake. Iowa State and South Dakota State. Um, there could be a potential 215 upset, but I don't think it would be this one. Iowa State does a very good job of not really blowing any sort of games that they shouldn't lose. Uh, and Iowa State's coach actually used to coach at South Dakota State, funny enough. Um, South Dakota State there. made a run last year too, didn't they? No, I don't they think didn't? so. No. Did they make the tournament? No. Really? Maybe a few years ago they won a game, but not last year. Well, I saw an Iowa State flag today, so I'm thinking Iowa State as well. UConn, now, first of all, even just look at this, the whole region, like, UConn's the number one overall seed. Mm -hmm. They get FAU in their bracket, who just made the Final Four, San Diego State, who they played in the title game, Auburn won the SEC, Illinois won the Big Ten, and Iowa State won the Big 12. And that's who they have to play. Like, it's a pretty brutal... Yeah, stretch for a team that's the number one overall seed. Just you, you didn't even say BYU. Pointing that out, yeah, and BYU is good. They're like I said, they're artificially a six seed. They should be like a f a five seed. Yeah, so that pretty, UConn is the favorite, but it's it's a rough road for them. Um, but against FAU, uh, do you want to have any upset here, or should we keep them going? Uh, I don't know. I think this would be a good spot for an upset. Oh, really? You don't think FAU could do it? I mean, they could turn on a different just mode when it comes tournament time. Um, they're just, they are not, they've been very close to a lot of games they shouldn't be close to, which is why it just gives us hesitation because last year they were much more secure. Uh, but if you want to go the upset here, I won't stop you. I would entertain it, but I think taking UConn is, is supposed to be, I mean, they're defending champions and they have a pretty good chance of going back to back. So this is not the one. V8 that I would take. I would All take right. the one here. So we'll, we'll move UConn there. San Diego State and Auburn. Well, do you agree, though? Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. I do. Um, I think I'd go Auburn. Me too. I, I just, analytically, they're just better. And offensively, defensively, they're kind of the same. Offensively, they're better. Give me Auburn. Illinois, BYU. This will be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Both high-octane offenses. Um, I had gone i believe illinois in one and byu in the other but if illinois wins i think they could go farther than byu um so you know that might be a, a thing but what do you do you have any sort of glaring opinions on this game i think i'm biased because i saw byu play and i haven't seen illinois play and so i'm inclined to pick byu here that's fine illinois does have uh terrence shannon jr nba player gonna be a stud but that doesn't mean, obviously, NBA players always win. Right. Uh, well, BYU games. had, uh, who they have, friggin' Jimmer, Jimmer like, for a million dead. years <laughs> ago, yeah. <laughs> did he, do, but he didn't play in the NBA for very long, did he? No, he didn't. No. He's kicking it, though, overseas, dropping, like, 50 a game. Yeah. Um, so you want to go Illinois here? That's uh, No, I don't care. I'm cool with either one. I picked one in each. Okay, I'll, I'll say BYU for this one. All right, BYU, and then Iowa State and Drake. I think in Iowa State. All right. That's good. Auburn, UConn. I would say, uh, you. I don't. I'm cool with either one here. I also, shockingly enough, picked each in my two brackets that I did. One UConn, one Auburn. Mm -hmm. I think UConn obviously is the favorite to win the title, and they should be. But with their brutal bracket, uh, Auburn is much higher than a four seed. And I think if Auburn wins this game, they have the potential to make the title game from just winning this one Sweet 16 game because I think it'll show a ton about how good they are. If they don't, then, you know, obviously they're out. Oh, well. Um, but would you like to have UConn move on to the Final Four or would you like to have Auburn upset UConn? Um, I think I'm going – I want to go Auburn here because UConn – who do they lose? They, I mean, they've lost players, They have obviously. lost to people. I mean, their team is still amazing. It's probably one of the best teams to come back that – you know, won a title, like, mm -hmm. the next year. Um, but, again, it is very hard to repeat, and their region is pretty pretty brutal. Um, and Auburn obviously does have experience. They're an older group. Bruce Pearl, their head coach, has been to the Final Four before. 
and I like I said, analytically they're like ranked as the fifth best team, which number one is Houston slash UConn. Oh, they have a uh, broom. I remember where was he? Johnny Broom. Yeah. Was he on Auburn last year? Yeah. He was good yeah. in the tournament. He was good. And then UConn has just a lot of guys that just stepped up from last year. They have Tristan Newton, Donovan Klingon, Stefan Castle, NBA player. Um, but let's what what would you like to do here? I think Auburn gets it done this time. Let's do it. I'm not mad at it. Iowa State BYU. Uh Iowa State. Yep. I agree. And between here, I honestly am gonna put my vote in for Auburn. I think Iowa mm-hmm. State's floor is good, but I think their ceiling is not really final four caliber, so let's have Auburn going to the final four. I agree. Let's move down to the West region. Carolina, we will have them losing to Wagner in the first <laughs> round. <laughs> no, we'll have them winning. Michigan State, Mississippi State. MSU. This is this is basically a coin flip, to be honest, but we'll yeah. pick MSU. MSU. We're not even going to tell you which one. You're right. just going to have to figure it out. Um, St. Mary's Grand Canyon. Hmm. Grand Canyon. Is that where is that? Is it in Arizona? Take a wild guess <laughs> where really? Grand Canyon University is. I told <laughs> Griffin. I, I take a wild guess. The Grand Canyon. Oh wow, nice. Inside dude. the Grand Canyon where they're building the Walmart. Yep, it's inside the Grand Canyon, right next yeah. to the Walmart. Okay. I think it's mainly also a lot of people go there online. <laughs> like it's a heavy online university. Gotcha. But well the commute probably is a bitch. Yeah, so, I'm sure. Yeah, well. <laughs> but uh, their head coach is actually the brother of Baylor's head coach uh, who won a title. Um, his name That is, means nothing to me. What, no, I'm saying that doesn't mean <laughs> they're upsetting, but um, they, they are a relatively popular upset pick, not the most popular. But I will say in both of mine, I did go St. Mary's because St. Mary's also a team that has a very high floor, kind of similar to Iowa State and... It's just not an amazing matchup for for them, but I could definitely see Grand Canyon pulling it off. Who's the coach of St. Mary's? St. Mary's? Yeah. Um, I forget his name. I forget his He's been there a long time. Um, Grand Canyon also, they do have a potential NBA player, uh, Tyron Grant Foster. He is uh, very, very good, and the brother of, I believe it's Scott Drew, Bryce Drew is his name, um, for Grand Canyon, Scott Drew, the coach for Baylor. So, what would you like to go here? I think, I think St. Mary's. All right, we'll have St. Mary's go through Alabama and Charleston. Um, they pretty much play the same exact way, but Alabama just does it all better, to be honest. So, unless Alabama has a down game, Charleston has a good game, which is possible. I think we should have Alabama move on. Okay, Clemson, New Mexico. I had had New Mexico in both of these. Um, Clemson is stumbling into the tournament, played horrible in the ACC tournament. Um, funny enough, uh, Ben Middlebrooks is a transfer from Clemson. Mm-hmm. When they got off the bus, there were these guys that were talking to him or whatever. It was a little bit after they had, you know, take, took pictures of everyone. He was about to leave. Uh, they were like, hey, what's up with Clemson? Where are they? And Ben Middlebrooks was like, yeah, where's Clemson at? Where are they at in the ACC tournament? Are they home? He was like totally crapping on Clemson, and it was mm-hmm. really funny because sometimes you don't know if players who transfer like had any sort of beef with the with the players, or maybe they just moved on because they wanted to. But he was just shitting on, on <laughs> Clemson. It was pretty funny. Probably feeling himself a little yeah, bit. Uh, so let's definitely. take New Mexico. I I like it. I do like it. They just won the Mountain West. Mountain West had a great year this year. Um, I their head coach is actually. <laughs> the son of Rick Pitino, who is a legendary coach, coached for St. John's right now, did some uh, interesting <laughs> stuff at Louisville, but we won't get into that. But he's won a national title, and if if he takes St. John's to the tournament next year, which they absolutely should have gone in this year over Virginia, he would have been, I believe, the only coach to take like six programs to the uh, tournament, which is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. But his son is at New Mexico, and he's doing an awesome job. So we'll have them move on. Baylor Colgate. Colgate has been a cool upset pick a few years ago, the past year or two. But this is probably their worst team they've had under their coach. And Baylor, again, similar play style. Baylor does it better. I don't really see an upset happening here. Yeah, I don't trust Baylor, but we'll we'll take we'll Baylor. We'll have them win in this first one at yeah. least. Dayton, Nevada. 
Um, I had Nevada in both of them. I'm not opposed to going Dayton either. Dayton does have NBA player Deron Holmes, the second. He's a very, very good. He'll be the best player on the court. Nevada, though, is dramatically underseeded as a 10 seed. Mountain West got a lot of disrespect here. Like, New Mexico was definitely a tournament-worthy team, and the committee said that they would not have made the tournament if they didn't win their Mountain West tournament, which is pretty shocking, and they got an 11 seed. Nevada is a 10 seed. It's basically a pick 'em. Dayton, Nevada. Um, I do brackets where you get points plus the seed. So a lot of times if it's a pick 'em, I always try and go for the lower one. That's not mm-hmm. what we're doing here. We're just trying to get everything right. Um, so do you have a strong opinion on this? Uh, I like Dayton. I'm a Dayton fan. We I, can go Dayton. That's I would. Fine. I want to go Dayton. I think they got robbed in the COVID year with Obi Toppin. Yeah, that was it unfortunate. Didn't get their tournament run, and this is, I think, the first time that they've been back in the tournament since yep. then. So I want to go Dayton. Let's do that. Arizona, Long Beach State. I don't think Arizona <laughs> will lose uh, another two to fifteen seed. Long Beach State is also not a good tournament team. Yep. There's not. So Arizona. Arizona, North Carolina, MSU. Again, <laughs> you have no idea which one. Do we want to have an MSU upset here? Either MSU. Uh, no. No. All right. North Carolina well, moves uh, on. Let's. Wh- are we picking which one? Mississippi or Michigan? Michigan. You want to go Michigan? Is that what you? Because I didn't pick one yet. Oh, okay. I thought we were telepathically communicating about which one we were doing. I think. I mean, you're a Michigan rider. What do you mean? Your dad went to Michigan. State. I mean, my State. dad moved to Michigan State. Yeah, but analytically, Michigan State is way higher than their seed, but. Recent games heavily favor Mississippi State because they haven't really lost. Like, Michigan State's lost to teams that aren't in the tournament. Mississippi State has lost to teams that are very high, and they've also literally crushed, you know, Tennessee recently. So I don't really care about either one. I think whoever wins could give Carolina some problems. I don't know if they'll win. Um, But uh, Mississippi State matches up better with North Carolina, but Michigan State matches up better with Mississippi State. So if Mississippi State beats Michigan State, I could see them giving Carolina some trouble and having a chance to upset. If it's Michigan State, which they are a better matchup against Mississippi State, I think they'll lose in the next round. I um, think Michigan State wins and then loses to Carolina. Yeah, that's probably that's... what's going to happen, which will rob us of a, a potential upset. But oh well. St. Mary's in Alabama. I have an opinion on this, but I want to get your take first. Well, I don't know a lot about either program. I'll tell you, this is oil and water. Like, Alabama is one of the highest paced teams. St. Mary is one of the lowest paced. Mm-hmm. Well, usually that favors the lower paced team, doesn't it? You like Virginia? I thought you were going to say the opposite. I do agree, and I actually have St. Mary's winning in both of these. I'm not very high on Alabama, and I go on a limb and say if Grand Canyon beats St. Mary's, I think they also beat Alabama. Okay. I think Alabama loses either way um, in this game. Okay, we'll go with St. Mary's then. Did I say Alabama or St. Mary's? You said St. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah, no, 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 (laughs) it is. I thought I said Alabama will win. No, Alabama will lose. I don't think they will make it. If they make the Sweet 16, I guarantee you they won't make it anywhere farther, even if they play Michigan State or Mississippi State. Don't care. Okay. Uh, Baylor Clemson. I mean, no, not Baylor Clemson. Baylor New Mexico. Do we want another upset here? Mm, I I feel like the 11 seeds in this tournament are going to do some damage. I absolutely love it. I picked New Mexico in both my brackets to win. Baylor is a good, efficient shooting team, but they turn it over a ton, and New Mexico does an awesome job taking advantage of turnovers. They have one of the highest uh, points off uh, points off of turnovers per game in the country. They don't allow a lot of turnovers, but they turn it over for the other team a ton. I, I think this is... A pretty interesting matchup. Baylor could still win if they hit their threes at an efficient rate, but I like the New Mexico pick. Let's let's go ahead and do that. And then mm. Dayton, Arizona. I think Arizona. All right. Arizona goes through. Carolina and St. Mary's. I don't like Carolina. I don't either. And ironically, not because I don't like Carolina, but because I think when you look at all the general, you know, important stats – St. Mary's is just a little bit better in absolutely everything. Like, they're just slightly better in everything, you know? Only thing that they don't have a ton of in terms of being able to stop Carolina is a big man to go with Baycott. But I think if you were to tell me, you know, hey, what team, you know, do you think is going to win this game? They're basically the same. One team has better guards. One team has better bigs. 
in the tournament, give me the team with better guards nine times out of ten. Mm-hmm. You know, unless it's Zach Eady making all his free throws. I, I think the guards run the show if it's even, and I would not be opposed to a St. Mary's upset. Okay. All right. Let's do it. So they make the Elite Eight and then New Mexico, Arizona. What do you think? I think Arizona. Okay. Do you that's disagree? Fine. I had it split. Um, New Mexico and Arizona, just because I love this New Mexico team, and Arizona mm. has had a few hiccups in the past, but I'm okay. They ha- are much better, not much, but they are a-, a solid amount better than last year, and last year obviously was a little bit of a fluke, uh, mm. so I'm I'm okay with them winning here. And then St. Mary's versus Arizona. I'll let you pick this You want one. me to pick this one? Well, you seem to be pretty high on St. Mary's. I am on St. Mary's in New Mexico, and... Only thing is, I think Arizona could totally lose in the Sweet 16 or round of 32, but I think if they match up against St. Mary's specifically, I think they could win that game. And while I do have St. Mary's, weirdly enough, going to the Final Four in one of my brackets, as weird as it sounds, not sure what the heck that was. That was an emergency alert. I didn't get one. And I guess you don't really uh, care about your health, so that's that's pretty cool. Let me read what it says. We're keeping this in, by the way. This, there's no point in taking this out because I just went through everything. Um, Wake County Sheriff's Office law enforcement. It says lawn enforcement. It should say law enforcement. I'm not joking. It literally says lawn enforcement <laughs> instead of law enforcement. They misspelt it. Presence near Yate Mills, Tyron Road. Avoid if possible. Stay inside. Call 911. Okay, that's... It's a little extreme. So if we die, that's the reason why. Wait, um, what's the issue? I, do, I have no clue. They just said, though? get inside, call 911. If you're in that area? Go inside, stay inside, in all uppercase. I didn't get that. I don't, I don't know why I got that. And that's annoying. It totally messed up what I was saying. I don't even know what I was saying. You were saying that you were about to say Arizona. St. Yeah, Mary's, yeah. Yeah, St. Arizona. Let's have them go to the Final Four. Yeah. Okay, after that interruption, um, Houston gets the long wood. I think mm-hmm. they are going to make that long wood some short wood, and they will go ahead and move on. Nebraska A&M. Nebraska, this is pretty much a coin flip. Nebraska, uh, they have potentially the best player, Casey Tomanaga. He is basically Jeremy Lin, but he can shoot like Steph Curry. He's insane. Will be If they win this game, he'll be a super fun tournament player. A&M is more physical. They have a guard named Wade Taylor who's really good. What would you like in this matchup? I want to go A&M. All right. Let's go A&M. Wisconsin, JMU. <laughs> JMU. Give me the Dukes. I agree. Wisconsin went on a run to the Big Ten title game, but I think it was lightning in a bottle. And before going into that, they were terrible. JMU has just been very consistent. They actually beat Michigan State earlier this year, so they've beaten top-tier teams, relatively top-tier teams, at least Power 5 schools. So I agree. Duke, Vermont. Well, Duke's not very good, but I think they'll get past Vermont. I do agree, but Vermont, don't be surprised if maybe with five, four minutes left, they are closer than this game, and then Duke probably pulls away at the end. Texas Tech, NC State, why we would never have our team lose in the first round, right? Not to Texas Tech. No, not to Texas Tech. Maybe to Creighton. There is a metric, uh, it's called kill shot. That is done by an advanced metric guy for college basketball. It's basically when a team goes on a 10-0 run. It's called a kill shot. Mm -hmm. And the more of that that happens and the less that you allow, the higher percentage chance you are to win your game. In terms of Texas Tech, they they have one of the – they basically produce some of the least amount of kill shots out of Power 5 schools in the tournament, and they allow some of the most. So even if we don't – go on a ton of organic runs ourselves. Texas Tech is very stagnant, and I think they uh, could potentially slip up, and I like NC State winning that game. I also don't like Cliff Kingsbury or Patrick Mahomes. Totally fine, and since this is basketball, that directly applies. So Exactly. Uh, we're going to have NC State win. Texas, or not Texas, Kentucky and Oakland. Uh, Oakland, cool you're here. Played some teams. Uh, don't, don't they give a chance? Nope. Let's have Kentucky. Florida, and it's Boise or Colorado. That game would have been well done by now. It's it's actually going on right now. Is it Boise um, State? Or no, Boise State, yeah. Boise State and Colorado. Colorado State just beat Virginia as the one t- uh, playing game yesterday. did Florida have a player, like, break his leg in the SEC championship? 
this like year one of their better players this year yeah i don't think they were in the sec championship were they i thought they were who Lo- won the Loki sec can't even remember uh, auburn, auburn won yeah i can't remember who it was against which is great podcasting on our <laughs> on our part whoops um but we're not in the sec no we're not we don't care I mean, we do care, but not as much as ACC. But this is one of the most important matchups because in terms of he going... He did. He what? did. Florida's Micah hand locked in, breaks leg oh, in the SEC yeah, no. title game. You're right. I totally forgot about that. How do you... <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I don't I don't know why. You made me feel dumb. No, I totally forgot about that. I had a brain for a moment. So there. let's go with uh, the other team then. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say... This is a very important meeting because um, Boise State and Colorado are playing right now. I think Colorado will win, but in the case that they lose, I think Florida clears Boise State. But if Colorado wins, I think they clear Florida. And the winner of that game has a relatively high percentage to not only make the uh, you know, potential Sweet 16, but maybe the Elite Eight. I don't think they will, but both of these teams have a solid chance of, of winning the next round. So who's um, winning the game as we speak? I think Boise State is up right now. Uh, I believe it's 13 to 9. Oh, it's not even close to being done. No, not even close. Let's assume Colorado wins, and since that guy broke his leg. Uh, Starter. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they will maybe not win. So we'll have Colorado win. Marquette, Western Kentucky. If you want to have a 2 over 15, I wouldn't be mad about this one. Not going to lie. If you don't, then we'll move Marquette through. No, Marquette did well last year. I think they they were two last year as well. I don't think they They were, and they did not make the second weekend. They lost in the round of 32. I still I still think they'll to Michigan State. They'll win in the first round. Okay, that's fine. Only thing is, I will say I'm not saying I may have picked it maybe in one to be fun, but the past three years there has been a two seed to lose in the first round. There's been a fifteen a few fifteen seeds. Obviously, we know. St. Peter's and Princeton. You think Tennessee or Roberts? Tennessee will lose then. You think Tennessee will well, be just, the one to lose? Just for mathematical reasons, we'll say Tennessee loses. <laughs> okay, I will St. say St. Peter's is nowhere close to the team they were. It's completely new people and they're not as good, so I wouldn't advise it. But if you want to do it, that's fine. well. Maybe this is the year that no two seed or L- no, no, yeah, it totally could happen. I'm saying if you want to pick a, a two, a fifteen over a two, the be best this. one is this one. Well, do you? I mean, if you want to do that, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. You don't want Marquette. Well, no, it's it's saying like it's what three percent versus thirteen percent, you know? I mean, like five percent versus thirteen percent. Like, yeah, it's a big difference, but it's still thirteen percent. Yeah. Uh, Houston A and M. Do you want to have an upset here or move through Houston? No upset. Houston. Houston. Here's... The Dukes. James Madison versus Duke. I think James Madison. I totally agree. Duke is just such a boring team, and they just feel so mid. I don't like them <laughs> winning this at all. Uh, if they win that game, they'll lose the next round anyways. Okay, NC State, Kentucky. Um, what do you think? <laughs> I Who I does think. Kentucky have? They got Rob Dillingham, one of the clutchest players, NBA player, Reed Shepard, top five pick, basically Tyler Hero 2.0, and they're not even starters. Mm. I'm not I'm not confident. Okay. I'm really not. We well, can move them through if you want no, for the sake of NC State podcasting. I've, I've seen them play in a tournament before, but it's just it's one game, man. I know. So if we win against Texas Tech, though, I'd say I'd be happy. It's an upset. Yeah, you we'll, know, we'll take Kentucky here. So unfortunately, I, not, not my doing. This is Stone. No, what do you mean? You just said you pressed the button first, so you I didn't technically press the hit it. You yet. literally just pressed it right now. No, I didn't. I didn't press the button yet. I hovered. I hovered over the Kentucky Whatever. bubble. Do you want him to do NC State? No. Are you sh- okay, so there we go. But don't don't make me the bad guy. Here. Both of us are. We both okay. them. Colorado, we're assuming, uh, and then Marquette. Colorado. All right, Colorado. Even if it's Boise State, I think Florida wins, and I would see Florida potentially beating Marquette. Shaka Smart, their head coach, has not been to the second weekend in like I don't know how many years. Just can't really get it right, and they have injuries to their best players. They could still be healthy, but that doesn't mean they're 100%. The Sweet 16, Houston versus J. Why does that keep freaking happening? Oh, my God. I'm going to turn my damn phone off. This is so stupid. (laughs) I'm, like, pissed. 
It's ruining Is that the same one. The ruining the entire. Yeah, I don't know. Freaking, they can't spell. They probably sent it out again because they said law enforcement instead of law enforcement. Like idiots, freaking stupid. I don't care if I die. Just let me do my bracket. All right. As I was saying, Houston or JMU. Um, what do you think? I think the run dies. Okay. I could see Houston losing anywhere in here. Just has to be the right matchup. Uh, which has to be a team that shoots very well, which JMD does, but obviously it's not a guarantee they make it here. Mm. Houston's defense is just insane. Their offense is better than last year. They've had experience against Pac-12 or uh, Big 12 teams this year, so I think it's a safe pick. And then Kentucky versus, we're assuming, Colorado. I'm going Kentucky here. I agree. This is basically the same almost to a T bracket that I had, so that's good. We're agreeing. Uh, Houston versus Kentucky. UH versus UK. What do you think? Kentucky. Kentucky. Wow, I had that too. I think either, obviously one's going to prevail, the defense of Houston or the offense of Kentucky. I will say Kentucky's path to the Elite Eight is probably the easiest of any team. So just ideally, if you're thinking, hey, if Houston has an offensive slip-up one game versus a JMU, if Nebraska or A&M could get them I could see them losing so it also just makes some relative sense that doesn't mean hey if they play they're 100% gonna win but I think it makes sense if Houston maybe slips up Mm -hmm. so Kentucky to the final four going down here Purdue they do not lose in the first round if they do they should fire their head coach immediately I don't care what he's done uh (laughs) that would just be unexcusable yep Utah State TCU um I like TCU all right. Do you like Utah State? I don't really care either way. Okay, I'll go TCU. I do like TCU as well. Gonzaga McNeese. Where's McNeese? What is that? Um, they are in the mid what? I can't I don't know where they are. Mid maybe Louisiana? Are they in Louisiana potentially? I'm not sure where McNeese is, but I hate this for both teams because I want both of these teams to win. Um just Really sucks that they're matched up with each other. Big Nice, their head coach, uh, got fired at LSU for recruiting violations. Went to Big Nice, and they were one of the worst teams, and boom, turned them into a 30-plus win team. Gonzaga may seem a little bit lower, but they're very, very efficient. The metrics also love Gonzaga, and they do, similar to St. Mary's, seemingly do a good job of beating teams that they should beat. But Big Nice is an amazing 12 seed as well. What are your opinions on this game? Uh, Well... It's in Louisiana. Boom. Uh, Gonzaga historically has not done as great in the tournament. They like, made the Sweet 16 maybe eight times in a row. Really? Yeah. Well, and I mean, they never win it. No, but that's them as a one seed. Right. So, usually so in the eyes of a one seed, they don't do successful. But in terms of w- winning, I'd say they are successful. They're a good basketball program. I just don't think that. But they, you know, this is their worst technical, technically their worst year in a while. I don't think they win. All right, McNeese. Hey, got, where is Gonzaga? It's Washington, I believe. Okay. Do you know where any school is at all? Well, ever? that one's a weird one for sure. I know, but I feel like you would know by now since they've been here for so long. Aren't they in like, like an Indian reservation area of Washington State? What? Gonzaga. I have no clue. No clue. Okay. You could look that up for me. I have no all I know is that they're I believe in Washington. Uh Kansas Samford. Going with Kansas. Really? Dickinson. He's injured. He's is gonna he? play, but he's injured. And their best player is not gonna play. Dick? No. Uh I believe it's Kevin McCullough. Oh. Well, or Dewan Harris. I, maybe it's Dewan Harris. I can't remember. I don't know. Kansas has one of the best starting fives, but they their depth is horrendous. They have two players injured. One's not playing. Samford chucks up threes like at an insane rate. They do shoot very well, but their pace is also insanely high, so they're going to be just running back and forth. Kansas, I think, is just going to get tired, and obviously they're going to have to sub people out, which they're not a deep team as it is. And also something to keen in on, this is going to be in high altitude, so it's going to make it even harder for Kansas to have all their starting five stay on the floor. I Normally I would be like, okay, I don't care. But honestly, I, I'd pick Sanford in both my brackets. So 
So I'm I I think Samford going is is a pretty good bet. That's fine. Twelve versus thirteen is kind of crazy, but that's fine. also twelve versus four versus thirteen, um, and then twelve versus thirteen in the next round. But I will say I would advise to potentially pick a four versus thirteen in your bracket because I can't remember how many years in a row that it's happened. May, I think it's maybe. F- 12 of the last 14 tournaments, a four seed or higher, has not made it to the next round, meaning they lost in the first round. So maybe look at potentially picking that specific upset. Uh, Oregon, South Carolina. Before we pick, I just wanted to say that it's in Spokane. Spokane. Spokane, Spokane, Um, Washington. Spokane, Washington is known for its Native American heritage. Wow. So I was kind of... You're kind of right, yeah. I'm kind of right with that one. That's cool. Um, Oregon versus South Carolina. South Carolina. All right. We have South Carolina. I like Oregon, though. I don't care either one. Justin I Herbert. picked Oregon in both, but if the South Carolina wins, I wouldn't be well, surprised. I, I think I'm biased because the women's team is so good. Let's. Well, I thought you were going to have a little bit of a better, you know. Reason? Yeah, I thought you were going to be like, well, my dad's uncle <laughs> went there or something like that. Well, in my head it's either it's South it's South Carolina because of the women's team or Oregon because of Justin Herbert. Well, and Dylan Brooks. I like Herbert, so You like Dylan Brooks? Oregon, sure. Do you actually? Now that he's not on the Grizzlies, yeah. He he's earned still... his money relatively. Now now his money doesn't really look like a bad thing, too bad. We're going with Dylan Brooks. Also South Carolina, according to advanced metrics, there's a luck rating. They are the luckiest team in the entire college basketball, which, mm-hmm. you know, you could. there's good and bad luck when you could look at it, but going into the tournament, you don't want too much because sometimes it could artificially boost up, you know, your, uh, your team. And also, as a sixth seed, their analytics have them rated as, like, in the 50s. So, not amazing. <laughs> so, I... Uh, I agree with the Oregon thing here. Creighton you, and Akron. You're going to feel dumb if South Carolina wins. I potentially will, but I don't think they'll win another game past that. Okay. Well, Creighton, we've seen Creighton play. Yeah. I'm not messing with Creighton. I agree. I will say, Akron is not a great matchup for Creighton because Creighton does not like getting physical at all. They're one of the least fouling teams. They hardly do anything in the paint. Akron is extremely physical, and I think I'm not necessarily saying I picked them in any brackets because they didn't. If they won, I wouldn't be surprised. And I did bet their, uh, I believe they were plus maybe 11 or something. So I, I bet their points. Um, but uh, in, a little bit of an interesting matchup there. Uh, Texas, Colorado State. I don't know anything about either of them. Either team. Um, let's go Texas. They have a little bit of a better matchup. Uh, they have a guard, Max Asmus. He was on Oral Roberts when they... Had their upset a few years ago okay. and is one of the highest scoring. He has some of the most points, I think, in college basketball history, like in terms of a career. So that's pretty impressive. So we'll have them win. And then Tennessee versus St. Peter's. It's our upset. Do you want it? It's Yeah, that's our upset. All right, right go for it. I guarantee you it's not going to happen, but who cares? <laughs> Let's do it. Purdue, TCU. Purdue. All right, Purdue and Edie go through. McNeese and Samford. Uh. I feel like you want to go Samford. No. You don't? No. Okay. I think Samford will beat Kansas, but the winner of Gonzaga McNeese, even if Kansas wins, is going to go to the Sweet 16. Doesn't matter. Okay. So we'll have McNeese go through. Creighton, Oregon. I want to go Creighton. Creighton yeah. is safer. I agree. Texas, St. Peter's. No miracle run for St. Peter's. Uh, let's you hedge our want St. Peter's here, Let's so. hedge our bets and, uh, and end it here. Yeah. So, uh, Let's go with Max A. Smith and Texas. Purdue, McNeese. I want Purdue. All right, that's fine. I will say uh, McNeese is not a bad matchup versus Purdue either. So could this be the insane run if they get past Gonzaga? Maybe. I really wish they played a different five seed like Wisconsin or San Diego State. I would have loved them to make the uh, Elite Eight, which would be insane. But I agree. Let's have Purdue go through. And then Creighton, Texas. I'm, I want Creighton. Creighton as well. Purdue versus Creighton. This would be an amazing matchup. Purdue. All right. We'll go with Purdue. I don't like Kalkbrenner. You don't like? Really, I was going to talk about Kalkbrenner. He, I mean, it's a pretty crazy matchup. I will say, I don't think he's getting down and dirty with him in the paint, Not but he's a huge body, and it's just both teams are pretty similar. They can both shoot. 
And it's basically, I don't really think there'd be a ton of coaching adjustments. It would just be, hey, which team's better? And Purdue is deeper, and Creighton has a great starting five. There's a metrics on advanced sites that shows you the best starting five. And in the top ten, I think Creighton has, like, number five, but Purdue has number two and seven. They have two of the best starting fives in basketball. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, So we'll have Purdue not lose early and get to where they are hoping to get to and go to the Final Four. And that's our only one seed in the Final Four. Yes, which is good. Do not pick more. I think two is the max. If you go three, I guess, but I I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we have Auburn, Arizona. Auburn. I agree. I think if Auburn beats UConn, it is their destiny to at not. I'm not saying they're going to win, but to make the title game, and then Kentucky, Purdue. Hmm. I want Purdue. Do you want? Kentucky? Yes, I agree. Okay. I think Kentucky is a ceiling offensively, and uh, again, we want to hedge our bets a little bit because they're not a guarantee to make the Final Four. Um, but I, I would be shocked if they even made the title game. Just their defense is not sustainable to go that far. And then we have Purdue versus Auburn. All right, on the count of for three. For the title. On the count of three, you say it and I'll say it. Okay. One, two, three. Purdue. Purdue. I okay. just, um, some people aren't going to like it. Um, my dad does a, which is really cool, I want to do this one day, where you like, you don't pick a bracket, you like go in a draft and you draft teams, and depending on how far they go, you get like your money back or whatever. And he, I always have him make a list every year. Last year, um, he had FAU, and San Diego State, or he didn't have San, he had FAU, Creighton, um, and uh, what's the team that Miami beat to make the Final Four? Was it Houston? I think it was Houston. I can't remember. He had like all three of those teams, and they were all so close, and they all ended up losing, <laughs> and they went like they didn't make it or win. But he had the second pick, and I told him to t- to pick Purdue because I think Purdue has the second best chances to win it all. Um, they do worry me a little bit with just them being very reliant on their their big man and Zach Eady. Uh, but the difference from last year to this year, they shoot way more efficiently. They shoot it so much just just be, a bad, at a better clip than last year. Uh, I think one funny statistic that we both say is uh, 100% of one seeds that have lost in the first round have gone on to win the title the next year, which is what that was a, the, What was the team? Virginia. It was Virginia. Technically, even if it's a low sample size, 100% is the, uh, is the stat we're going to go off of. So sure. I agree. This is a solid bracket. Purdue wins, and we are going to enter it in some sort of ES, whatever stupid ESPN challenges uh, they, they have for us. What, and that's our bracket. The total points will be scored. Uh, I don't know. 148. I randomly thought of that number. No meaning at all towards it. <laughs> I just randomly have to submit bracket. All right. And that's our bracket official. It's going to go undefeated. Perfect. Well, I think that's a good way to end the episode. Um, please don't like keep track of our bracket. Don't kill us at all. It's please, going I to be promise. busted. We promise. But um, that's okay. It's all for fun. So um, this has been Light at Red. We'll see you two weeks, right? Yep. Two, two weeks. weeks. Perfect. See you later. Yep. Music in this podcast was Jonas Hipper's King of Sports and Vibe and Sneaky, licensed under Creative Commons from the Free Music Archive.